Christ in you, the hope of glory, is the center of the gospel. If you don't have Christ in you, you don't have the gospel. This is the gospel. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Bible, the Bible repeatedly and emphatically teaches that the life of Christ is dwelling in you. Here is an example, 2 Corinthians. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. The basis of the righteousness by faith message is you receiving the righteous life of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're not righteous by doing something right. You are righteous by receiving someone who is right. Yes. You with me? Yes. Only one life is accepted in the sight of God. Yes. Only one human life is accepted in the sight of God. That's the life of His Son, Jesus. And He gives you that life as a gift. If you believe, you will receive. Yes. Notice. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. Listen, there is nothing, nothing, nothing metaphorical about these verses. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is not a metaphor, it's a reality. He gives you his very own life. He lived for 33 years, so he can be able to do that. I died so I can give you life. Jesus said, yes. receive it. Yes. This is the essence of the gospel. This is my passion of preaching. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I am nothing without this doctrine. Amen. I am nothing without this reality. I'm nothing with this person dwelling in me. Yes. And I've got news for you. You are nothing without him. Yes. Don't let the enemy steal him from you and give you somebody else that was never a human being. Doesn't know what it means to walk in your shoes. Doesn't know what it means to be tempted with sin. Doesn't know what it means to be tempted to be separated from the Father. Doesn't know what it means to be dead. Don't let the enemy steal your Savior from you. Amen. And I've got news for you. The Trinity does exactly that. Notice, this is not Adventist. It says, this passage, of, after quoting from the Athanasian Creed, it says, this passage offers a paradigm statement of the orthodox understanding of the Trinity. As it makes clear, the doctrine requires not only that God exists in three persons, but that each of the following is true as well. There is exactly one God. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Notice now this. The Father is not the Son. The Holy Spirit is not the Father nor the Son. The Holy Spirit is not the Son. The Holy Spirit is not the Son. That's what they're saying, right? Now, this is an Adventist one. This is taken from the North New South Wales Conference, Bible Study for Youth. It says, however, the Trinity concept has proved to be the most adequate way to affirm all of the biblical evidence about God. There is one God. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. All are equal and interdependent. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. The Son is not the Spirit. Get it? Spirit is not the Father. The Father and the Son and Spirit are all personal beings. Well, not everybody in the church believes that, but anyway. Not impersonal forces. Jesus became both human and divine. God can be known through all three beings. Did you catch what they're saying? The Spirit is not Jesus. Don't fool yourself and believe that Jesus is in you because the spirit that you receive is not Jesus. This lie comes from Satan himself. And I will tell you why very soon. The scripture will tell you why. You will see it for yourself. But as a result of this belief, notice what Hope Channel teaches under the Trinity. They say, is the Holy Spirit Jesus after his death? The Holy Spirit is not Jesus. 
but their character is one, identical. The Holy Spirit is sent to all of us to live in us because Jesus, having taken on human flesh some 2,000 years ago, cannot be everywhere. Uh, honestly, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm not smarter than anyone. I'm the least of all the people. I'm just, I'm just trying to alert, to bring to our attention to God's people, to you, who I believe, I hope you are much smarter than me. I'm trying to bring to your attention something that I believe is important. Amen. Now, it just happens, it just happens that as the wise man said, there's nothing new under the sun applies to this as well. Notice what we read in 1935, a letter from Willie White, who happens to be the son of Ellen White. Notice what he says. The statements and the arguments of some of our ministers in their effort to prove that the Holy Spirit is an individual as our God the Father and Christ the Eternal Son have perplexed me and sometimes they have made me sad. One popular teacher said, we may regard him as the fellow who is down here running things. And then he goes on to say, my perplexity were lessened a little when I learned from the dictionary that one of the meanings of personality was characteristics. It is stated in such a way that I concluded that there might be personality without bodily form, which is possessed by the Father and the Son. But notice what was being ta taught. That the Holy Spirit is the fellow who's running things down here. It's not Jesus. Hope Channel said, the Holy Spirit is in you. It is not Jesus because Jesus took upon himself a human flesh. He's up there. So the one who is in you is not Jesus. It's not the life of Jesus. It's another person or being. Depends who you ask. That's called God the Holy Spirit. Very sad. To me, brothers and sisters, this is the ultimate denial of the gospel. Because the beautiful gift the Christ has accomplished and he wants to give to you his life yes. is rejected by this doctrine. It's not the life of Christ. It's God, the Holy Spirit.